whether you heard this at all, but it was announced like this, that we've had a long program and you've been sitting here for a long time. As soon as you're hungry, we'll stop the program. <laughs> And sign, sign A.C. Rajan. <laughs> well, if somebody raises his hand, yesterday I asked you to raise your hand, you know, that's another story. But during the course of my talk now, if somebody raises the hand, I know what to do. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to briefly turn to... Uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. <coughs> Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'll do my best to be as brief as I can. Though this, por this portion of scripture lends itself to uh, a lot of beautiful thoughts, okay? Deuteronomy 32, have you got it? Now in verse 7 it says this, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your fathers and he will show you. Your elders and they will tell you. My father had a an outline. He died long ago in 1982. But when he, he got saved late in life, about say 55, 56, and... Uh, he, he lived until 82. He used to keep writing out outlines, what he hears. And in this portion of scripture, he had this kind of an outline. Remember the days of old, the years of many generations. Ask your fathers, they will tell you, and so on. This is divine reflection. <laughs> Verse 8, when the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations. When he separated the sons of Adam and he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel and he had this title, Divine Election. Verse 9, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance divine affection. Verse 10, the first part, he found him in the desert land, in the waste howling wilderness, and he led him about. That's divine direction. At the end of verse 10 it says, and he kept him as the apple of his eye. That's divine protection. Then when you come to the last point, it's verse 11 and verse 12 together, which goes like this. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up, and carrying them on the wings, so the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign guard with him. This is divine instruction. So you see, uh, what my dad had was divine reflection, divine election, divine affection, and then divine direction, divine protection, and last of all, he had divine instruction. I love that. For a long time, I didn't use it. It was just in my box. One day I discovered the paper between all of my other papers, and I said, what a nice outline this is. And then I tried to preach on it. And since then I've spoken a few times on it, and some of you may have even heard it. But what a beautiful thing. Chapter 32, that's where you are. The next is chapter... See, you don't know. <laughs> chapter 33. And the next is chapter... 34. And the next is chapter... It's finished now. So you've got three chapters there. Chapter 32, okay? 
chapter 32 is a song. What we read now, the whole chapter is a song. The last verse of chapter 31 says, this is the song that Moses sang. Moses caused the people to sing. So chapter 32 is a song. Chapter 33, the blessings of God are pronounced. And chapter 34, Moses is called up to the mountain and he dies there. Isn't that a wonderful way of ending your life? Ending any one of us, ending the life. You've got a song, you're followed by a blessing, and then into the presence of Almighty God. What a lovely thing. Now, looking at this song, what you read here is, remember the days of old. Now we are remembering 25 years, and what a reflection this has been tonight. The leaders of the church, the elders of the church, and various ones recollecting what happened in the 25 years. And it, through it all, I noticed, and I thank God for that, that through it all, you were not boasting about anything that you did. If you mentioned it at all, I believe it was for the glory of God, right or not. I'm looking at the elders. It is for the glory of Almighty God. Praise be to God for that. And I tell you, when you look back on the past, what is God asking you to do? Asking you to look at all your achievements, all the great things you have done? Not at all. God is asking you to look back and recollect and try to recognize where he put his hand upon you. At what points in your life not the church only, but your individual life. At what points God became a reality to you? God answered your prayer. God showed his faithfulness to you. And you felt the wonderful sense of his presence in, in your distress and in your problems. At that, you look back and sometimes you think, what a day that was. What a time that was. So what God wants you to do when you reflect on the past is to think where he became significant in your life as you trusted him and walked in his ways. Reflect in the past. You know one of the best ways to do that is to go to chapter 8. Keep your finger in chapter 32 and come to chapter 8. Okay? Now in chapter 8, this is what we see. Chapter 8, verse 1. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land. And verse 2 now. Read with me, everybody. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. For what reason? To humble you and to test you and to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or no. Now in verse, uh, what is this now, verse 3, so he humbled you. It's a finished job, isn't it? So he humbled you. How did he do that? By testing you, by causing you to hunger, etc., etc., putting you through some kind of test or another. He humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna and so on and so forth so that you understand that man, listen to this carefully, man does not live, say with me. Man does not live. Ah, what? By bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Almighty God. I want you to know that, I want you to learn that God says. What a God. So there is a purpose for everything that has happened in the life of the church, 25 years, or in the life of every one of you believers. There is a purpose. Sometimes in the valley, sometimes on the mountain top. Have you ever been like that? Not, it's all, not, not all mountain top, is it? Somebody say yes or no. It's not all mountain top. Very often you find yourself, yea though, come on, say with me now, yea though I 
who walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. I love that word because it means praise the Lord, okay? I'm trying to explain to you. Blessed be God. All right, what a lovely thing. God does all these things in your life. And one day, you know, actually you've got such bad memories. I've also got bad memories. But you've got such bad memory, mem memory power, I should say, that you can't remember everything. You try to recollect, what shall I thank God for? Have you ever said that? That means you're not aware of what you have to thank God for. What shall I thank God for? Then immediately you start, Lord, thank you for mommy and daddy and the good food we had. This Forget about that. What are you talking about? Remember what God has done in your life. Don't forget it. Note it down. Write it down. Memorize it. Do what you like. I tell you, God is a great and a wonderful God. And I tell you, the ultimate purpose, or what do you call that now? The, there's another word for that. I can't get it now. But the outcome of everything should be that God is, finish it, God is glorified. Who said that? Who said that? Ten on ten for you. Okay? God is glorified. Isn't that lovely? God has got to be glorified in your life. If you've got a church now, don't think you're, you're, you're something very special. No, you've got to glorify God. Even if you have ten people in your church. So what? You are there to glorify God. Agreed with me, Andrew? Say yes or no or go home. <laughs> Something. What a God we have, eh? Praise be to God. All the way that the Lord thank God led you. Mind you, you don't have to wait 25 years before you try to recollect and begin to uh, reflect and all that. Don't, can't you do it every day? What's wrong with you? I mean, one day at a time. Have you heard that song? Yes. One day at a time. <coughs> Walk one day at a time and reflect. Oh my God, what a God you are. What a day I had yesterday. Lord, I felt your presence. I love you. You begin like that every day. You know how what you what 25 years is going to be like if you lived like that every day? Praise be to God. Now wait a minute. There's a little problem here. You try and solve the problem for me. Are you listening? Brother Stephen, you're listening? Okay. Now, verse 4 says, your garments did not wear out. You know these people, they walked in the desert land for 40 years. Did you know that? Desert land. There were no shops, no dukans, any of those sort of things around. Nothing of that sort. Just sand. Desert land. And they walked through that for 40 years. Their garments did not wear out. Number one. You got it? Number two. Your foot did not swell. And when you look at chapter 29, it says your sandals did not wear out. How do you like that? Sandals did not wear out. They were walking, walking, walking 40 years. And the sandals were still good. My goodness. And you and I need shoes every uh, few months, I think. My goodness. Their sandals did not wear out and their feet did not swell. In the heat, in the sand, in the whatever. What a marvelous thing. What I mean is, you know what I understand by that? There are things that should have happened and could have happened, but didn't happen. There are a lot of things that happened. Yeah, you write it down, your diary and all will tell you what all things happened. But there are so many things, far more number of things that should have happened and could have happened, but didn't happen. And you didn't know about it. God didn't tap you on the shoulder and say, my child, do you know what happened? 
I stopped that car, otherwise you would have had an accident. No, he not, doesn't stop and tell you everything. All that the devil wants to do to put his foot on your neck and to smother you to death, all that he wanted to do, God knows. But you didn't know, you're sailing through. All because of the grace of God. All right, number two. When the Most High, that is God, divided the land and separated the sons of Adam and set boundary. Wait a minute, what is that? That's divine election. By the way, believers, listen to me, look at me please. Every believer look at me. I want to see your face. Do you know that you are chosen? Yes or no? You are elected? Do you know that you are heirs? What? Don't look excited about it. That's what I don't like. I tell you, I'd like to jump out of my skin if I heard this. We are heirs. All right, now you'll jump out. Heirs of God, not the Sultan of Brunei. Not even heirs of the, of the, what do you call it, Queen of England, however old she is. No, you're, you're heirs of God. And as if that is not sufficient, God carries on. I tell you, you can't stop him sometimes. He carries on and the next thing he says, you are joint heirs with Christ. You feel like having dinner? No, okay. I, I get scared when I look at the elder side of me. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I asked him to put the mic this side. <laughs> All right, that, that, that doesn't matter. All right. I, I tell you, it's marvelous. You are heirs of God and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you one more marvelous thing. You'll faint over here. You are the inheritance of God. Wow. How do you like that? How about all the stars and the million stars and all that is there in you? God is going to collapse the atom and put it away. But you are God's precious inheritance. Right, now come to number three. The Lord's portion is his people. And Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now, I had already mentioned that. That you are heirs of God. Now you find that in Ephesians chapter 1. You are heirs of of God. That is, we are heirs. But God's inheritance is you. Not all the gold in the, in the land, not all the stars in the sky, the every believer, blood-bought believer, and conform to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are the inheritance of God. Close your eyes for just a moment and thank him. Close your eyes, everybody. And just thank him for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Okay, now come to number four. <coughs> he found him in the waste howling wilderness. Who found who? God found Israel in the waste howling wilderness and led him about where there was no sense of direction whatsoever. This is divine direction. What a lovely thing. God directs us. And the fifth one. What did I tell you the fifth one is? Did anybody get that? What? Divine protection divine protection you know what that is a very strange thing he said this is the apple of the eye the very middle part of your eye is called the apple of your eye anything and it can happen even a dust storm and immediately your hand goes to your eyes does it not you want to protect you've got the eyebrows you've got the what you call it the this portion of the skull and everything to protect the eye God says, just like your eye 
the apple of your eye you protected god protects you happy all right one more thing verse 11 and verse 12 i'm going to read it to you will you please listen okay verse this is now deuteronomy 32 mind you not chapter 8 deuteronomy 32 as an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young spreading out its wings taketh them them up and carries them on its wings so the lord alone led them and there was no strange god with them now he gives us a kind of a uh a a figurative language right he's telling us something what you what have you got so far divine reflection number 2 divine election number 3 divine affection number 4 divine direction number 5 divine protection and number 6 you've got divine instruction and for that he takes the takes the bird the eagle He says, "As an eagle, so the Lord. The way the eagle behaves, so the Lord behaves. As an eagle stirreth up her nest. You know these eagles; they fly further up in the, into the sky than any other creature, any other bird. The eagle is the one who has got eyes that could see kilometers away." many kilometers away and the eagle is the one who's got talons the claws the talons which are so strong that they could swoop down and down and pick up a young animal and take it way up right on top to the pinnacle up there up on the mountain top where there is the nest and that nest is sometimes 6 feet deep and 6 feet wide because these eagles are so big and the mother eagle teaches the little one that is divine instruction bird watchers tell us that the mother eagle sometimes suddenly becomes crazy in the mind there comes a point of time like the computer button is pressed something happens to that mother eagle and she comes over that nest hovers over her young flutters her wings makes a big hullabaloo over there and tosses the little ones out <coughs> tosses them out and they have never flown before they've never seen the world before they've never had any experience like that but the mother eagle mercilessly looks like mercilessly tosses them out of their nest and those little birds i tell you those eaglets I tell, let's take two of them out of the three that I've got in mind. Two of them. One is John, and the other is Mary. My goodness, they fall. Bird watchers tell us that they fall and somersault and turn and twist, and they are falling 90 to 150 feet down. Can you imagine what a what a time it must be? what a traumatic time that must be as they fall down almost they get like a heart attack ready to go into the uh, emergency in the hospital those poor little eaglets well nigh getting a heart attack and the eagle suddenly comes down swooping down and picks them up on her wings and they grab the mother for dear life I tell you, grab the mother, panting hard, looking this way, can't even get it. Tears in the eye, and the mother takes them up, drops them in the nest, and she pushes off to go and get some worms or something to eat. Mary looks at John, Johnny. What happened to Mama? All these days she loved us. She loved us. I tell you. Yes, she, he said. She loved us, and she brought us food to eat, and she cared for us. What happened to her? What is this sudden madness? Johnny says very quietly. He's a he's a male, you know. So he says quietly. I'm thinking about that. Let her come. <laughs> when, when she when she when she comes back, I I I'm going to say I am going to give her a piece of my mind. 
true enough, the mother comes back. Wow, mother's coming back. And when the mother eagle comes back, you know what? Bird watchers tell us that 15 minutes later, repeat performance. <laughs> Out of the nest and into the nest. Out of the nest and into the nest. I tell you, those poor things nearly die. And yet, all of that is divine instruction. Even for our church. The devil wants to do all sorts of things. We can't see it. But God knows. He knows what you're going through. Mother, he knows what you're going through. Father, he knows what you're going through. Brother, sister, young people, older people, he knows every moment of your life. And he is watching, just like that mother eagle, swoops down, swoops down and picks you up and cares for you. I bore you on eagle's wings, he says, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you indeed will obey my voice and keep my covenant, and you shall, you shall be a special treasure unto me, to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. What a wonderful thing. God has tested you uh, borrowably. Um, what is something? Sharon something? Okay. Now. Uh, God has protected you. God has been with you in the past, with the elders, with the believers. God has been with all your families, and he will not leave you nor forsake you. Are you happy? God bless you.